Hello, this is Doug Gerlach, president of iClub Central. Tonight, our presentation is Power Stock Searches with MyStockProspector.com. We're going to take a look at this tool that's produced by iClub Central uh, that helps you with your stock screening uh, needs. Uh, My Stock Prospector is an online tool uh, with a lot of functionality focused on long-term high-quality growth stock investing. Uh, so tonight we're going to take you through from the most beginning basic methods of, of using the tool all the way through some advanced tips. So thanks for joining us. Uh, before we get started, let's review our webinar best practices. If you're having technical problems at any point during the presentation, uh, we suggest you contact GoToWebinar directly via their toll-free number, 800-263-6317, or on their website at gotowebinar.com. Uh, it may happen tonight that the sound or graphics may become choppy or drop out. Uh, this could be a problem with your side, uh, so we suggest that you turn off any unnecessary programs that might be running on your computer, that you don't connect using Wi-Fi if you have a hardwired connection available, and you can always listen using the telephone, and that will free up your computer to display the graphics part of the program. If you have a question, you don't need a microphone. You can just type it into the GoToWebinar application box. I'll be monitoring those questions and doing my best to answer as many of them as I can throughout the presentation. Also in that GoToWebinar application is the handout for tonight's presentation. So go ahead and click on that to save a copy to your computer, open it up, print it out quickly if you want. Uh, we will make that available when we archive this webinar presentation as well. So let's begin talking about power stock searches with mystockprospector.com. It's a good idea to start with the basics and let's talk about what is stock screening. My Stock Prospector is a stock screening tool and stock screening is something that's only really possible in the era of computerized databases. Stock screening allows us to use a computerized database of, of company information to help you find stocks that meet particular criteria and you have to decide what those criteria are but we think that screening tools are especially useful in the Better Investing uh, Toolkit 6 world to help you find companies that meet minimum criteria for growth rates, uh, for quality, for valuation. Uh, and we can use these tools to help you improve diversification by looking for stocks that meet certain other attributes such as companies of a particular size or market cap, companies in a particular sector or industry. So there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of power associated with a stock screening tool that you can utilize. Now My Stock Prospector is really the only internet screening tool that's devoted to fundamental analysis. There are a lot of other screening tools but they're mostly tailored towards towards technical analysis, towards the, the chart readers, towards momentum trading, uh, day trading, not looking at the kind of fundamental information that we as Better Investing members and toolkit users are looking for in our portfolios in, and in our club portfolios. So that really distinguishes mystockprospector.com. Another distinguishing factor is that the data that we use is updated weekly in the program and it comes from Morningstar and that's the same data that's used in the Stock Central and the other iClub Central and Better Investing tools. So uh, that is a big bonus. That means when you screen using the set of data in My Stock Prospector uh, and then you open up that uh, those companies in the SSG Plus at Better Investing or in Toolkit 6, uh, you're not going to see big variances. It's all going to be based on the same underlying data, the same growth rates. Uh, and another distinguishing factor that that really makes my stock prospector stick out is that we have 10 years of company history so there there are hardly any that I know of other screening tools that allow you to search for 10-year growth rates so that really allows you to tailor your searches for the better investing style approach. There are 120 different criteria that you can screen on. There's a complete list and definitions of all of the criteria in the help section of the program. So if you want to know more, uh, I definitely suggest that you check that out. Now we developed this program based on a 
old tool that was built in the 1990s uh, using Windows, uh, and that tool required users to download data on a weekly basis, and before that, to load data from CD-ROMs, and even diskettes before that. So by bringing it onto the internet, we've eliminated all of that. We take care of all the data updates on the back end, uh, and when we modify the program, we don't have to worry about updating users. Mac users can use the program just as easily as Windows users or Linux users. It'll work on a tablet uh, as well as a desktop PC. The pricing of the program is $49.99 a year, and that's our introductory discount offer. Uh, but we have one, three, and six-month subscription terms available, so you can check Check all of that out at mystockprospector.com, and we even have a free demo that you can play around with after tonight's program. If you're if you're not already a subscriber and you want to see some more, uh, you can play around uh, on the uh, on the free demo using old data. Uh, but that way, you can get a feel for how to construct queries and the number of companies that result uh, from the type of searches that you might be looking at. Now. As on a more advanced basis, MyStock Prospector can be used as a data mining tool, which means that you can go into the database and look for data on stocks that you already own. In effect, a custom report generator, uh, and we'll take a look at that in the advanced section of our presentation tonight. Uh, when you do that, you'll get always current data uh, on and those customized reports that you build for the stocks that you want to follow. Um, you can export the data from the program into spreadsheets, so those of you who love playing around in Excel, uh, you can take these this data and uh, 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 format it and create all kinds of uh, beautiful reports uh, or combine it with data from other sources uh, to really uh, get you the information that you want to use. You can also review industry averages as well as all of the companies in a particular industry or sector so that you can line them all up, you can identify uh, industry trends, you can look at margins by uh, by uh, all of the companies in a particular industry. So there are all sorts of additional ways that you can use the program other than the, the, uh, the obvious uh, answer, uh, how do I find stocks that look good that will fit in my portfolio. So let's take a look uh, at the process uh, of building a screen. Uh, and there, we've broken it down into three steps. The first is the step of defining the criteria. What is it that you're looking for? Are you looking for stocks that are growing sales and earnings at a particular rate? Are you looking for companies that have a particular dividend yield? Are you looking for companies that have uh, that are in a particular industry or sector or some combination of uh, any of those fields. Uh, so that's all part of defining criteria. Then after you've defined the criteria, you can define the report, which means how are, do you want to arrange the fields uh, on the uh, on the results screen? Do you want to add, bring in some extra information, such as uh, the current price, perhaps, uh, that you want, aren't searching on but might be useful to take a look at? And then finally, you can view the results. And if you're not happy with the results, then you can go back to step one and define the criteria, adjust, loosen, or tighten up particular fields uh, to get the result sets down to a manageable number of stocks. So this process, uh, once you get the hang of it uh, and understand how it works on the website, uh, can, be, uh, can be used uh, whether you're a beginner uh, an intermediate or a more advanced user. Now we have set up the program so that beginners can get started right away without worrying about the obvious question, what numbers am I supposed to put into all of these different 120 different criteria, which one should I select? And we, we know that many, oftentimes uh, beginners are going to be a little overwhelmed and not have the best idea. If you're more experienced, you probably have a better sense of what to use. But for beginners, we have predefined screens. And these screens are, are set up so that you just need to click on a screen and you see the results and you can then uh, look at the, those companies and decide which might make for 
um, a, a further review, further analysis. After all, this is not a magic box tool that will give you stocks that are guaranteed to go up. The idea behind screening is we're going to eliminate unreasonable companies and focus on the few companies that seem to fit our particular needs. So in the predefined screen section, uh, once you log into the website, up on the top part of the menu bar over towards the right, you'll see the predefined screen section. And we have seven predefined screens right now, and you'll find their names uh, along with the descriptions uh, next to them. There are two uh, that are better investing style screens, um, and you can see they're, they're similar, but they have uh, a little bit of variation. The first one, Better Investing One, uh, looks at companies that have 10-year revenue and earnings growth rates greater than 15% with stable margins, stable returns on equity that are selling below their average PE ratios. Better Investing Two looks at only companies that have five-year earnings growth rates uh, faster than 15% and projected growth, five-year growth rates greater than 15%. Uh, also selling at PEG ratios, uh, uh, so PE ratios below their earnings per share growth rates, and with a projected total return greater than 15%. So again, slightly different, uh, but still focusing on some of those attributes that Better Investing members are familiar with. And then there are growth, there's a growth, sample growth screen, a sample quality, safety, and value screen, uh, and one that I call iClub Growth that I created uh, to demonstrate some of the use of the program. So to use one of these, all you have to do is come over to the, uh, the right and click on the, uh, the button uh, or the little magnifier, uh, magnifying glass and execute the search. And if we uh, select that uh, iClub growth screen, uh, we'll get a list of companies there. So here we have um, uh, about, uh, about uh, a dozen companies that have passed this particular screen. Uh, and we're right into the program. So it was uh, just a couple of clicks to get to this point, and we have a, a list of companies. Uh, many of these companies uh, may be familiar to you uh, if you're following uh, the better investing approach. Uh, but uh, as the note says here, you can click on the column heading to sort in ascending and then in descending order uh, any of the column headings. So you might want to start with uh, the uh, the historical growth rate and search for companies with um, the fastest uh, 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 growth rates. Uh, you might want to look at the quality ratings. So it's really up to you how you want to tackle it. Now, just a couple of points on this screen you will see uh, over here on the uh, left side, there are two companies uh, with the ticker symbol CCL uh, and the suffix TO. That TO stands for the Toronto Stock Exchange. Uh, and there's another one down here, DOL.TO. Uh, and there's also HEI and HEI.A. So each of these uh, companies, these two companies, Heiko and CCL Industries, have multiple share classes. So we have a record for each of the share classes. Uh, so uh, that just does, it looks like a duplication, but uh, the way that the database is set up, every ticker symbol is a unique record and tied to the fundamentals that are beneath it. Uh, so this is a, a, a pretty straightforward, uh, and I think anyone ought to be able to, to check out these uh, screens this way. If we continue, as you move your mouse over a particular row, uh, the name pops up. Uh, and this would be useful, you can see on this screen, uh, on the far right, it says quality rating. Uh, we could have 30 or 40 different columns if we wanted to. Uh, and on that very wide report, as the screen scrolls, the ticker symbol on the left remains fixed, uh, but that might not give you the information you want to know. So whenever you move the mouse over a particular row, it pops up with the company name to give you that extra bit of information. And even better, if you click in a row, double click in a row, you'll display this historical graph. And this is a 10-year semi-logarithmic graph of the, uh, the company uh, that you've uh, selected. Uh, if you look down at the bottom, you can see the historical uh, the historical sales growth rate for the all years pictured and the historical earnings growth rate for all years pictured. Uh, and so 
uh, you can see in this case a lot of consistency for this company, ticker CMD, that's growing uh, at a very consistent rate uh, with earnings growing somewhat faster than sales over the last 10 year period. Now up here on the, uh, the top left you'll see a series of buttons and by clicking on these buttons we can go forward and backward through the entire list of results, the companies in the results set, and that will let you visually determine if a company uh, looks uh, attractive to you. So you don't have to rely on the numbers. Um, so this is a very much an SSG focused, a stock selection guide focused approach to reviewing the uh, the results and determining if, hey, this company looks like it might work, fit on the stock selection guide. So let's go ahead and add that to my uh, to my um, uh, my my research list and that I'll do a little more uh, do a little more analysis on. If you want to understand a little bit more about how the screen is uh, created, click up here on the selected criteria section and it'll pop open uh, the, so the definition of how this screen was created. Um, so in this case, you can see a lot of fields that say IA-current, uh, and I'll talk about that more later. That means that uh, it's the industry average for the current uh, field. So in this case, the historic five-year earnings per share growth rate is at least the industry average of the current field and the maximum of any company in the uh, database. Uh, so in essence, we're saying, uh, instead of saying faster than 15% or 12% or 18%, we're saying faster than the average for companies in the industry group for each company. So if uh, the first company here is Baidu uh, in the internet content and information industry, so it's here because it's, it's uh, uh, at least its five-year earnings per share growth rate is going to be higher than the average for the internet content and information uh, industry. I'll talk about that more later. If you look at the quality rating, you can see the quality rating is between 3.4 and 8, which means, uh, and we'll talk about that as well. Uh, but so the, uh, the, the selected criteria is a little bit complicated at first glance, but you'll quickly uh, uh, pick up how this works as we go through the program. Over here on the right, you can click on the Edit Criteria button, and you can customize this on your own. So you can take these predefined screens, and you can fix them so that they work better for you. You can adjust uh, the values. You can add additional values. So you have the ability to do that. It doesn't affect the original predefined screen, uh, no one can change that except us on the on the system side, but you can certainly create a a version of it that works for you that has the uh, criteria that you are uh, looking for in your particular uh, stock searches. So you have that capability um, in any screen and any screen that you create. You can review the selected criteria at any time. Now, some additional navigation tips across the top of the screen uh, in the results, uh, the results header there uh, are a couple of options. Uh, you can set the, the results to display uh, up to 100 companies. It's, it defaults to 10, uh, so but it, it's your preference if you'd rather see 10, 25, 50, or 100 at a time and scroll your monitor, uh, the scroll the program up and down on your, on your monitor, you can do that. Uh, the expand table allows you, if you've got a wide report set with a lot of columns, uh, the table will actually expand a little bit and take up more of the horizontal width of your monitor, uh, so that uh, can be useful. The exclude, include industries uh, button here, we'll talk more about industry records, uh, but if you have a search where industry records are showing up, and you'll know them, they're in red italics, uh, you can eliminate those uh, by clicking the exclude industry buttons. We also have this button, exclude junk. And we'll talk more about junk companies. Junk companies, uh, you have to set up your own junk screen. Uh, but this, this could be penny stocks. They could be stocks in a particular industry. Um, you can define your own 
uh, junk criteria, and we'll take a look at that as well. And, and, and that's just a way of getting rid of companies that you, you know you're never going to look at a, at a stock that has a, a very low stock price or uh, maybe a stock that's on a Canadian exchange because we do cover all North American companies. So you can, um, uh, so that junk uh, uh, button allows you to get rid of those from your results. Um, the next little icons here, we've got our save criteria icon which allows you to save it. We've got our edit criteria, so you can go back and edit, change the uh, criteria of a screen. Uh, we've got the little export button here. Uh, this allows you to export in an Excel or spreadsheet readable program. And then finally, we've got the email button here where you can email your stock screen to uh, club members or other friends and colleagues. They can view the results, but they can't edit them and they don't need to log into the program. Uh, this is great for investment clubs where one person has a subscription to My Stock Prospector and, and uh, does the screening and then emails the results, the screen, the, the actual screen uh, results to the members who uh, click a link and from there they can view the results and they can uh, decide which companies they might want to work on for the next club meeting. And then finally the filter uh, screen allows you to filter on company names. So if you've got a a, a, a screen results with uh, you know with a hundred or more companies, and you want to quickly go to a particular company, you can type it in there, and it'll filter out everything that meets that particular uh, uh, company name criteria there. So this is a on all of the uh, results. You'll see this navigation uh, header here, uh, both on the predefined and on the custom screens. Uh, so uh, you'll get comfortable with that pretty quickly uh, as you use the program as well. So now that you know how to uh, use the predefined screens, let's go ahead and now start talking about uh, the next step, which is creating custom screens from scratch. Uh, and as I said, it's great to use the predefined screens as a jumping off point where you can start using those uh, to modify your own screens. Uh, uh, that you would save and adjust, and that's a, a great way to start using the program and get up to screen up to up to speed with the tool. But at some point, you're going to need to to start at step one and define the criteria. And remember, we talked about our three steps: define criteria, define report, and view results. So here uh, we're going to start with a sample screen on um, uh, mid-sized growth stocks. And we're going to start by defining the criteria. And we've got a little, a little uh, tool here uh, that you can use to uh, set the minimum and or the maximum values for each field. Uh, and this uh, gets to be a, is a little complicated uh, to use, uh, but uh, the idea is uh, we've got a field here for the minimum value you're looking for. And over here, there's a field for the maximum value in the database. Um, we've also got down below, you can see the minimum values of all companies in the database uh, for that field and the maximum value. So this is 10-year historic revenue growth rate. And you can see the, the lowest uh, value of any company uh, is a 0% growth rate over the last 10 years. And the fastest growth rate is 2427 on an annualized basis. Um, so again, that's an outlier, uh, but you'll see that throughout the program, some very high figures. Um, so in this case, uh, the user has typed in 15 because they want 15% uh, at least growth. And they don't care on, on the upper end so much, so you don't have to uh, uh, set a value over here. Uh, but uh, it, feel free, if, if you would rather exclude super high growth rate companies, feel free. You could uh, set this between 15 and 30, for instance, if, that's what, if that makes you more comfortable. It's probably not going to uh, uh, not going to affect your results as you go through the program. Now, you'll notice there's also these slider bars, and you can slide these, uh, and uh, the values will adjust automatically. So in some cases, uh, feel free to grab onto those sliders, and the values will change. Otherwise, you can just come over here and type in that value. So this is um, uh, how all of the fields are uh, adjusted throughout the program. Uh, there are a couple of exceptions. Uh, there are a couple of, ex of, uh, of fields that have 
uh, uh, selector boxes or uh, sort of on or off. For instance, there's a field for ADR. So a company's either an ADR or a not, it's not an ADR. Uh, so there's no numerical value for that. Uh, the industry groups as well, industry groups, sectors, uh, stock exchanges, ticker symbols, those are all text-based fields uh, that you'll see. So using those criteria uh, uh, entry tool, you're going to be building out your particular uh, uh, criteria set. They're divided into eight categories. We have growth, uh, which is pretty pretty obvious. What are the historical growth rates of dividends and uh, revenues and earnings and net income and uh, cash flow? There's a lot of things in that particular group. There's value. That's where you'll find PE ratio uh, type um, uh, uh, and percentage to 52-week high and low uh, quality. You'll find the pre-tax profit and return on equity trends. Um, and again, this is something that's really unique to the program. We're going to take take a deeper look at that. Um, safety, uh, that's where you'll find company size uh, and uh, dividend payout ratios. Uh, the projection is where you'll find analyst estimates of projected growth. Uh, number six, proxy judgment is a little bit um, uh, is a little bit uh, 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 a little bit interesting. It's really for advanced users, but uh, we actually calculate SSG projections, uh, projected values. We apply default judgment mathematically, so not with any sense of a, a rules-based set uh, to come up with total return figures and other uh, items. Uh, so these can be. Uh, can be acceptable for mature growth companies. For every other company, they can be wildly out of whack, so I tend to stay away from those. We have trend, and then we have other, and that's where you'll find ticker symbol, industry, sector, uh, et cetera. Uh, as I mentioned, the help uh, section has the criteria in each of these groups and the definitions, and I'll admit that I sometimes click around trying to find uh, a particular, uh, particular uh, criteria that I'm looking for. Uh, but you can print out that help guide, and that would uh, help you know exactly where a particular criteria you might be looking for can be found in those eight categories. Um, so we're going to look for a group of mid-sized growth stocks today. So very simple, straightforward uh, screen. We're going to look for companies that have a historical average annual 10-year revenue growth rate and 10-year re earnings growth rate greater than 15 uh, percent. For quality, we're going to look for companies that have an earnings per share R squared of 10 of 0.9 or higher over the last 10 years. And R squared, if you're not familiar with it, uh, is a way of measuring how straight uh, a, the line is formed by a series of points. Uh, a perfect line. A perfectly straight line has an R squared of 1.0, and you can't get any more straight than that. Uh, a very erratic line might have an R squared of 0.5 or 0.6 uh, or 0.7. So by saying that we want the R squared of the earnings per share growth to be greater than 0.9 means that it's going to look pretty straight. The 10 years of earnings on our graph are going to be very close to a straight line, not a whole lot of variability there. And that's just a way of measuring the stability and quality of earnings per share. The trend pre-tax income, this is section 2A of your stock selection guide, the pre percentage pre-tax profit, the pre-tax profit margin. So uh, again, what's unique about My Stock Prospector is instead of saying, show me companies with profit margins of 15% or 20% or better, which would eliminate a lot of great companies in low margin industries. We can say, show me companies that have a pre-tax income that's trending uh, higher or is stable over the last five years. Uh, and we reject companies that have margins that are declining or erratic uh, or that are, are very low. Uh, so that's just a way of, of isolating 
well-run businesses uh, into your result set. And then finally, we said we wanted mid-sized companies. So we want sales between 1 billion and 10 billion. Uh, and so that is in the safety category. There is the 12, annual 12-month 12 sales of the company. Uh, and we're going to enter it in millions. So it's 1,000 million and 10,000 million. So we've got to uh, we have to make sure to make that adjustment when we're entering sales. They're always in millions. So we're looking for companies with sales between $1 billion and $10 billion. So this is a very simple uh, stock screen. You'll notice what's missing from this screen is that there's no P-E ratio. There's no valuation uh, metric included. And that's my personal preference when I'm building screens. Uh, you know, if, if we by the, if we searched for companies that had uh, a, all of these attributes and were buys right now, um, by the time we fi might finish researching them, they might not be in our buy zone anymore. Uh, or, uh, and likewise, uh, you know, I want to look for quality companies, and I'm willing to wait for them to become attractively priced. So by searching for the fundamentals first, and then I'll make that valuation determination uh, later on, and I'll put those companies on a watch list, and I'll update them each quarter, and uh, when they do fall into my buy zone, then I'll be ready uh, to buy them at the most advantageous price, not to simply uh, at the next club meeting because we've got money to spend. That's not the way to go about building a high-quality uh, portfolio. Uh, but again, that's my personal preference. I keep the value out of it, uh, and uh, I'll make that valuation decision on my own. So here's our screen, so I'm going to jump back to the program now. <clears throat> and here we are in section, uh, section one, the define criteria section over here. We selected growth, that's the uh, default when you get started. And here is the field list of all of the fields that are in the, um, uh, the growth category. And as I mentioned, we have our revenue growth for the last 10 years, five years, three years, one years, the last four quarter, and the last quarterly revenue growth, so the most recent quarter to the year ago quarter. The same thing for earnings, the last 10 year earnings per share growth rates, five year, three year, one year, the last four quarters or tra trailing 12 months, <clears throat> and the last quarterly earnings per share growth rate. We have the historical one, three, and five year price growth. We have the uh, and the, the rest of these, we have the dividend growth, book value growth, cash flow growth, implied growth, and historical share growth. And these are all for the maximum number of years uh, in the database for each particular company. So you can't uh, look at the dividend growth for the last three years. All we ha offer is the dividend growth for the entirety of the company's history that we have up to 10 years. So from this point, uh, we're going to need to select our uh, select those uh, fields that we wanted to add. And remember, we talked about the 10-year uh, earnings and 10-year revenue growth rate. So we're going to select them, and you can see when we select those, they turn uh, a light shade. They become highlighted. Then we click on the arrow button. The values are displayed on the screen. And then here's where we would type in our 15%. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, move my arrow along here so you can see, uh, our 15%. Uh, and then once you've done that in both places, uh, up here there is a button that says Running Totals. And this will give you the number of companies that pass on a running basis. So you can see after the first, uh, the first uh, field was created and entered, we eliminated uh, something like 7,000 plus companies to get down to 744 companies that had 10-year revenue growth of 15% or more. Uh, when we added the second criteria, we eliminated another 440 companies. Uh, so we have 307 companies with 10-year earnings per share growth and revenue growth greater than 15%. So that's pretty, uh, uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, 300 companies is still a lot to do. Uh, with the stock selection guide, so we're going to continue on to our next category, quality, where we're going to add the earnings per share R squared uh, over on the left, uh, that we wanted that to be greater than 0.9 or, uh, you know what, let's make it 0.85, uh, 
uh, that's uh, pretty close, but uh, about the same. So we've added that there, and then the trend pre-tax income. And you can see over here, we've got our trend pre-tax income. Uh, we didn't have to enter numbers here. Uh, there's a symbol of pluses and minuses and an even side, um, and uh, this is uh, something unique for the program. Uh, let me show you how this works. We've got um, uh, for both pre-tax income and return on equity, we've got fields uh, that measure the trends of Section 2A and 2B of the, of the SSG, uh, and they're actually identical, the trend and the rating fields. Uh, if you prefer, you can use the ratings. Uh, they're on a zero to six basis. Uh, or you can use the trend, which gives you that little, uh, that little uh, series of boxes that you can turn on and off. So uh, even is a rating of three. Um, slightly up is a rating of four with or one plus sign. Plus minus is even better at five. And then plus plus is a, a rating of six. Uh, and then on the other direction, uh, a, a rating of zero or, or minus minus means it's steadily declining. Um, uh, minus one minus sign is a rating of one, and minus plus is a rating of two, uh, which might be acceptable, uh, but still is not. Uh, it's below an even trend to into a downtrend. So three or better is generally good on the rating side. Uh, and you can see this little box uh, here. Uh, when you click on these items, they turn in. They they become highlighted uh, and become a little more easy, uh, and that indicates which uh, uh, which ones you've selected as you go through the process. There, um, I, you know, I, I like looking. I don't. So you don't have to remember. Uh, the zero to six scale, uh, the trend that gives you these little boxes. Uh, it's easy uh, to look at the even, and then the plus plus, uh, and to know which side you want to go on. And if you want to, if you want to be a little more aggressive, you can accept maybe the one, you know, the the plus minus on the on the minus side. Uh, but uh, that's uh, uh, how those work. So those uh, this criteria would give you results of resulting companies that look pretty good in section one and section two of the stock selection guide, uh, which is, uh, you know, the intention of those trend and rating fields. So uh, we're going to add in, finally, go to the safety group and add in sales. And as I mentioned, we're at, we've got to convert our $1 billion to millions. So we've got 1,000 million uh, at the bottom and 10,000 million or 10 billion at the top. Uh, we've come back and clicked on the running totals button again, and it gives us our results now of nine companies that have passed this screen. So we have very quickly whittled down uh, the, the number of companies in the database, which is around 8,000, to nine companies that have good growth of earnings and sales over 10-year history, uh, relatively strong, strong stability of earnings growth, have margins that are not deteriorating, they're at least even, and sales in that uh, mid-sized company range of $1 billion to $10 billion. So I guess the proof is in the pudding. Let's go ahead and look at which companies pass as of today. But before we do that, You'll, let's talk about how many companies we should be uh, searching for or, or hoping to find in our results set. Uh, I mentioned that uh, uh, there are nine companies that have passed the criteria that we set up here. Uh, if you only have, uh, anytime you have less than uh, around 10, uh, maybe that your criteria are a little too restrictive, too tight. Uh, if you have 150 companies, well, that's, again, too many to do SSGs on, uh, and uh, so we're, we're, uh, uh, you're probably a little too loose, you're too, uh, too expansive in your criteria. So using that field totals button allows you, the running totals, uh, the field totals button allows you to see for each field how many companies uh, pass that particular screen. So uh, if we go back here, you can see there's another button called field totals, and that field totals button will show you on each row over here how many companies pass. Running totals subtracts as you go. So you can see this side we're using running totals because every field, it gets smaller, gets smaller. We're eliminating companies until we get down to the very end. 
Uh, field total shows you the number of companies in each, uh, in each criteria. Uh, so if you've got a field where zero companies pass, well, then you know you've got a problem with that particular field uh, or else you don't need it. If, uh, if, if you eliminate every company in the database with a single field, that field has to be adjusted somehow. Uh, so maybe you made a mistake, there's a typo, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the, for instance, the values of R squared have to have a decimal place, maybe you didn't convert sales uh, from millions to billions, so you ended up with uh, companies that were too large. So uh, uh, that's how you can kind of troubleshoot as you go along. I think that between 10 and 30 results is a good goal. Uh, I think nine companies, is, that's close enough. Uh, I know this is a fairly, this is a fairly restrictive screen, uh, but if, uh, if I wanted to, I would go back and I would change those 10-year growth rates perhaps and, and maybe lower them to 14% or 13.5 or something like that uh, just to see or maybe reduce the sales growth rates to, uh, to 14 and see if that loosens up some additional companies and gives me some, some additional options. Uh, I think 10 to 30 is a good result. Um, you know, if it could be that a, a, a group of 40 companies is... Uh, also, uh, you know, can be winnowed down a little bit, but you know, 60, 70 companies is just way too broad, uh, and I would look at uh, adjusting that. Uh, the problem that comes when you've got too many companies is you start to cherry pick the results, and you start to look for familiar names, and you start to ignore the companies that you haven't heard of, perhaps. Uh, when you've got nine companies or ten companies, you or your club could quickly do SSGs and do some research on those companies and, and uh, see if you can identify some, some reasonable candidates. Uh, so before we look at the results, we want to go to step two, which is to define the, re the report. Um, here's where we can add additional criteria, such as company name. The ticker symbol displays with every results. Uh, result screen, uh, but uh, sometimes the ticker symbols are not as descriptive. And if we knew the company name and the sector and or the industry, uh, we could add those. That would give us a little more information about the stocks uh, that we're looking at. We could also add the PE ratio and relative value and the 52-week high and low prices. This, these give us a little bit of a sense of is this stock maybe in a reasonable valuation right now, or is it a little expensive, like many stocks in the market, or is it a little, little ex cheap, like there's something going on that might create a buying opportunity for us? You know, again, just to give us a sense of perhaps guiding where we go in our next step analysis. Uh, so these are the report. Uh, not only is how we arrange all of the, the fields that we use to screen on, uh, it's also giving us that additional informational uh, fields that provide the insight but aren't used in our search criteria. So the, the uh, defined report screen looks exactly the same as the uh, defined criteria uh, uh, page. We've got our groups over here on the left. We have our field list, so here's our different groups. We're gonna start with the other list. Here's our field list. We're gonna select the company name, the industry, the sector. I always like to see those. Uh, sometimes when you get a number of companies in the same industry group or in a similar sector, uh, that's a, a sign that maybe there's something going on there that uh, is uh, providing an opportunity for us. If uh, people are particularly negative about a particular industry, uh, that might be a, kind of an opportunity or there's some trends there that we can identify. And then the current price and the 52-week high and low prices are here. So that, again, gives us a sense of is this stock at an all-time high price or is it uh, somewhere in between or is it closer to the 52-week low, which, again, might mean an undervalued situation for us. So we select them, and you can select them all. You can see they're all highlighted here. So we selected them all. We click on the arrow button and then those uh, fields all come over to our uh, uh, list just like that. Um, we'll go next to the value section. We'll add current PE and relative value. Uh, relative value is just the percentage of the current PE to the average PE. So if uh, the relative value is uh, 1 or 100 percent, that means the current PE is the same as the historical average PE. Uh, the relative value is 90 percent. 
uh, that means the current PE is 90% of the average PE, so that could be an undervalued situation. If the relative value is 130%, uh, that means the stock is an expensive stock relative to where the PE ratio has been in the past. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the PE ratios of the past will hold in the future, but it's a, a quick thumbnail way of, of determining uh, the current valuation levels. So we do the same thing, we can add those report fields. Um, once these fields are here, we can click and drag to arrange them in the desired order. So company name is down here. I want to put it up next to the ticker symbol. I want to move the industry and sector up there as well. So we'll just click on those and drag them and you can see that now the order of my report is uh, that I have the symbol first, the company name, the industry, the sector, uh, the sales, and then growth rates, earnings, then have the uh, pre-tax profit trend, and then finally the price and valuation on the, uh, at the bottom there. So I can click and drag and arrange those, that report just like I want to see it uh, to make the most sense for, uh, for uh, my, uh, my purposes. And so once you're done with your report, uh, it's time to view the results. The same as with the predefined criteria. Uh, the ticker column on the left side is fixed, so it always remains on the left side. Uh, on wide tables, when you mouse over, you can pop up that company name. Uh, you can see the mini SSG graphs. Uh, you can sort by any column, ascending or uh, uh, ascending order and you can def return to defining the criteria or adding more fields to the report as you go. And so here are the uh, nine companies that passed uh, our mid-sized growth stock screen uh, as you, um, as, that we just created there. You can see over here on the far right in the uh, trend pre-tax income column that uh, all of these companies have even or better pre-tax profit trends. Uh, you'll see a lot of familiar names here. Uh, Chipotle, uh, obviously, uh, when you look, uh, if we scroll over and you'll see more uh, on their PE ratio, very low uh, because of the sell-off, the problems they've been having. Uh, a couple of companies here, uh, several companies here, followed by our small cap informer, including New Oriental Education, F5, uh, Middleby, and uh, Skyworks. Uh, Priceline Group is tracked by the Investor Advisory Service. So that is just a whole lot of uh, familiar names. Ulta Salon is uh, one that's highly followed by a lot of our investment clubs that I see um, when I travel around the country as well. So it's some very familiar names popping up on this list as well as companies that uh, have been, that are being followed by many investors uh, who use the better investing style. Uh, so that's just a great way to uh, 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 it kind of gives you a little more comfort that this would be a good list to take a look at uh, these companies uh, for your club study when you're trying to uh, find some, some more mid-sized companies uh, in the portfolio. So uh, if you are happy with the screen, you can save the screen, click on the uh, current screen uh, uh, header at the top, uh, then you can enter the screen in the description and click the save button and now it appears in your My Save Screens account. And every time you open up the screen it shows you the then current results uh, using updated data. So it doesn't show you if you created this screen in you know last October and you opened it today it's going to show you this week's data not the October data. Uh, so the criteria remains the same, but the companies that pass are going to change over time. So again, in an investment club, I think this is great. You have one uh, kind of, you decide on a couple of different screens that you like to see for different sizes of companies, uh, for different types of, of needs that you have. Uh, and then every month, you can generate, here is this month's a list of stocks to study following our screen. We've looked at a bunch of these in the past. Maybe there's some new companies that are, uh, have appeared on the screen that would make it worth your while to, uh, to, for your members to be doing some research on those particular companies. So here up at the top is the current screen. In the top left, click on the Save button, uh, and now it's saved to your account. So let's uh, a couple of other things uh, before we get into some of the advanced tips. Uh, the export button here allows you to export your screen results to Excel. 
Uh, and when you do that, you get a, a, a CSV file that looks something like this. So it's got a lot of, all the values here are raw numbers. So the uh, percentages are all shown as decimals. Um, the the uh, prices uh, sometimes have uh, uh, extraneous decimal places. Uh, and so it's kind of hard to interpret. But you can go into your Excel spreadsheet and you can re reformat it, uh, apply the number types to the various columns, add some formatting, and come up with a very lovely report that looks something like this. Uh, adjusting the cell types, the decimal places, applying formatting, uh, print that out and distribute that uh, if you like to. Um, it's just uh, uh, one way to, to, uh, to make it look a little more accessible. Um, and so it just takes a little bit of ex uh, expertise in Excel to make that happen. I mentioned the email results button on the far right. So if you're happy with this screen, you want to send it off to your club, uh, just click on the email button and it says, all right, enter the email addresses of uh, the people that you want to send it to. Uh, and we have uh, a project in the works to link this to my iClub uh, so that you would be able to select your current investment clubs from my iClub uh, and send the, uh, the email would go to all of your club members automatically. Um, if you are a club member who's using this tool, they would get it. You can customize the body text uh, and then click the OK button. Uh, they'll get an email that looks something like this. Uh, it says, uh, you know, it's got uh, uh, your name on it and it says, I created this screen. Here is the link. Click on it. Uh, it expires in 10 days, so visit it soon and see if there's some companies that you might like there and include your personal message. And so then the user clicks on it, they get a screen that looks something like this. Uh, it's uh, a read-only uh, view, uh, so they can't, uh, they can't change the screen. Uh, they can sort it, they can export it, um, but they can't edit it. Uh, unless they're a MyStock Prospector subscriber, then they can edit it, bring it into their own uh, account, uh, and modify it that way. So it, that's another, uh, just a real useful way of sharing information with your investment club. Now we're going to talk, uh, spend the rest of our, our time now looking at some of the more advanced features of the tool. Now these are going to get, uh, going to be presented in increasing complexity. So uh, don't fret if, as we go, some of these seem to be uh, way over your head. Other people are going to kind of appreciate uh, some of these complex tips, but a lot of them, uh, as we start off, are going to be things that you can figure out on your own. I'm, I'm very confident. The first is the junk screen, uh, which I mentioned earlier. The junk screen is a way of eliminating stocks from a result set that meet your criteria, but for other reasons are not stocks that you want to consider. For instance, penny stocks or, or stocks that are below a dollar or five dollars. Many many clubs stay away from stocks uh, that have very low stock prices or Canadian companies. Not because we don't like Canadian companies, but because of the currency issues, they get complicated to study. Uh, it might be that you just don't want to see companies in particular industries or sectors, so you could eliminate those as well. Uh, to create your personal junk screen, go to your My Save Screen section down at the bottom. You'll find uh, this junk screen section there. Uh, and in order to create it, it's just like creating a stock screen. So you click on the little arrow here to create your screen. Here's what mine looks like. Uh, I have uh, a bunch of ticker symbols here. Those are actually Chinese-based ADRs. That's right, I went in, uh, found a website that focused on Chinese ADRs. I took all the ticker symbols uh, and uh, I exclude them uh, using my junk screen. So I searched for uh, all of these ticker symbols. I searched for companies in, oops, companies in Canadian exchanges, the Toronto and the Toronto Venture Exchange, uh, et cetera. Uh, so if the exchange shows the company trades on that, I've got more, uh, 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 more uh, uh, Chinese ADRs. And then finally, if the current price is below a dollar. So those are my uh, junk uh, criteria. Um, certainly, you know, I would suggest starting with current price below a dollar. That will get rid of a whole lot of, uh, of companies uh, that occasionally show up. Uh, and uh, again, I just don't like looking at the Canadian companies, so I would eliminate those. Um, you can use any criteria. So in order to use the junk screen, we're going to search for the companies that we don't want to appear. 
and then when we click, can, can, uh, when we do a screen, there's a button over here that allows you to exclude and then include junk uh, from your results. So this is actually our um, our, our screen before we clicked on exclude junk, uh, and we got rid of uh, one of the companies uh, from that list uh, for whatever reason. So the uh, junk screen, very powerful. This came from a user suggestion. One of our Better Investing uh, chapter volunteers uh, who helped with testing uh, provided, uh, said this would be a great feature of the program. So we've uh, added that functionality there. Another great way to use the tool is to look at industry averages. Every industry, and there are about 148 of them, have a record in the prospector database uh, within, uh, with a weighted average, weighted by revenues, of each field. So we have weighted average pre-tax profit margin, weighted average return on equity for an industry, weighted average debt to capital, debt to equity, uh, number of shares outstanding, price, you know, and so it quickly kind of gets nonsensical, like a weighted average current price doesn't really tell us anything useful in my mind, but we just calculate uh, the uh, average values for all of the fields in the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, in the database for each company. Uh, so, in order to access industry averages, we look for companies with the exchange uh, instead of Nasdaq or New York, NYSE or uh, American AMX. We look for uh, INDUS. So exchange equals industry. Um, that uh, criteria will give us a list of all 148 or so uh, industries. And then we also, from there, we want to define the report. What is it we want to look for? So here's an example <clears throat> where we have the current dividend yield of each industry. Uh, we have the current average sales, uh, the current average PE, the current, the average current PE, and the average average PE. We have the average 10-year revenue growth, five-year revenue growth, three-year revenue growth, one-year revenue growth, 10-year earnings growth, et cetera, et cetera, as we go across. Um, again, I think this is most useful when we're looking at things like margins, pre-tax profit margins, and debt levels. Uh, so you can look at the, uh, those values. But this might be interesting to look at companies that have the fastest, what are the fastest growing uh, industries in the last year, for instance, uh, and see how those companies might be uh, fuel for uh, research, uh, the, the included companies in that particular uh, industry. So uh, this is one way to get up-to-date industry average data for every industry uh, that we track. Now, from this point, uh, the other thing that we can do is we can look for all of the companies in a particular industry. Whether or not we want to buy them, we can actually create a list of all of the companies in any industry group. Uh, there is an industry field. We used it before uh, on the report screen. So here in the criteria, we want the industry to be uh, equal to or the industry in because we can select multiple industries. So in this case, we have, uh, I, I, you start typing utilities, and it starts to display a list of all of the utilities. We can select them one by one, and then uh, we would have a list of all utilities uh, in the very, all the industry groups in the utility sector. Um, we could also do the same thing uh, by simply uh, selecting sector equals, and then selecting utilities as well. Um, here is an example of the home improvement stores industry. So created the uh, criteria simply says, show me companies with the industry uh, equal to home improvement stores. Uh, and here we have uh, some meaningful data, the average return on equity, average pre-tax income percentage, the trend of pre-tax income for each company, uh, the inventory turnover, the debt to capital. Uh, so we have a lot of interesting and useful information about the uh, seven companies. There's actually six companies uh, with one that, that has multiple share classes in uh, the currently in the home improvement stores uh, industry group. Um, so this can be interesting because you can sort by uh, pre-tax income, who has the highest pre-tax income in the group. Uh, obviously, Home Depot, on average, has the highest pre-tax income, followed by uh, Lowe's, uh, as you look at the data here. 
Uh, so uh, again, this can be useful when you're looking at a company and you want to know who are the competitors, who are the peers, who are similar companies. Uh, this will let you sort them out pretty quickly. And you can go from here and you can eliminate. Sometimes uh, for a, a, a very large industry group, I'll add additional criteria. Uh, for instance, only looking at companies that have positive earnings uh, in the last 12 months. And that will get rid of uh, the, those companies that don't, uh, fit our investing methodology. Uh, so that, again, is another useful way to use the program. Um, now, as we get a little more complicated here, uh, I've mentioned this before when we looked at it with the iClub growth screen. Uh, every criteria in the minimum and the maximum fields so on the, on the uh, both sides of the slider bars, uh, you can right click there and you pop up a little pop up that allows you to set the minimum of each field to be the industry average for that field, or you can even compare the industry average to another field, or you can compare that field to another field in the company's record. So what do we mean by that? Well, industry average current field means that we're gonna compare the historic five-year earnings per share growth rate of each company to the average five-year earnings per share growth rate of the industry that each company is in. So for home improvement stores, your, your list of companies might include home, one company in home improvement stores, one company in airlines, one company in consumer, uh, in uh, retail, specialty retail. Uh, so we're gonna look at those companies and find the ones that have above average uh, growth rates in within their industry when compared to other companies in their industry. So that's what current field means. Other field, again, this gets really kind of uh, really, really interesting, but there are a lot of places where we're, we're measuring debt to capital, debt to equity, for instance. So we could actually be constructing or, or uh, P, PEs to earnings per share growth rates. So we'd be looking at averages that way. Um, so. Uh, if we didn't have a sort of peg ratio value, we could say, uh, for instance, show me companies where the current PE is, uh, 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 or the current uh, earnings per share growth rate is below the current PE ratio or vice versa, right? So that would be an example of the other fields that would prompt you to select which field you wanted to use there. Uh, but uh, I think it's interesting finding companies that are fastest growing in their industry, that have the best margins and best, best return on equity in their industry, uh, really allows you to, uh, to hone in on high quality, high growth companies as opposed to uh, companies that are underperforming uh, uh, their, their similar companies in their industry. Uh, so again, uh, to get there, you, you select here and right click and that will pop up in that little window there that allows you to, uh, uh, oops, got to go back here. <laughs> All right, uh, so uh, that's how we use that particular uh, part of the program. Um, uh, the, uh, as I mentioned, uh, check the, uh, this is just a reminder, check the iClub growth screen to see how that uh, industry average field is used in comparisons there. Uh, the, uh, another way that you can use the program is because you can search for companies that, ha uh, that match a particular list of ticker symbols, we can use the uh, tool as a custom stock report builder. <clears throat> so you can use this to, to build reports using the companies in your current portfolio, right, or your current watch list. So you could actually be monitoring your watch list. Uh, and every time you visited the site and, and uh, ran that, uh, uh, criteria that screen it would say all right here are all of the companies in your watch list uh, here's the current price here's the current PE ratio here's the current uh, uh, the current uh, growth rate etc uh, to help you uh, watch those companies from a fundamental perspective to know if it's a good time uh, to buy uh, in order to do that in the other group there is a symbol field uh, and so we want to use condition in 
Uh, so here, instead of equals, we say in. And again, you can type in those ticker symbols, and they pop up. Uh, and you can select them so it'll match uh, the, the ticker symbols exactly, that autocomplete function there. Um, separate them with semicolons, and uh, you're good to go. But what's really useful is if you have a list of ticker symbols, if you have a you know, Yahoo portfolio, or you want to export your, your portfolios, or your entire toolkit library list of ticker symbols, you can certainly do that from toolkit. Um, you'll get a list of ticker symbols, and you can uh, uh, kind of quickly do a search and replace in Word or a text editor, uh, and get uh, very quickly uh, have a, uh, a report of all of your companies that you're interested in. Uh, and that would be uh, uh, just by copying and pasting that information into uh, your uh, into the program to find that customer report. And when you do that, uh, one you can create your own report. But um, what some people do is they replicate the Toolkit Six Portfolio Reports or the Stock Comparison Guide. Right, uh, so they use all the fields from the comparison guide, and so every company on their watch list is now in that comparison using the fields in the comparison. So uh, your your field list would look something like this, uh, but this is going from top to bottom. Uh, it's very close to all of the values that are on the uh, the Toolkit Six Stock Comparison or the Better Investing Stock uh, Comparison Guide. Uh, so. Uh, that's just a real interesting way of uh, looking at the same data, just in a different format, uh, and aut being automatically updated. Uh, and that would, again, help you to know which of these companies you want to bring over into your stock selection guide. Now, here are three advanced spreadsheet sheet ideas. If you're using Excel, um, you can set up a report uh, that you like to see and then use uh, the VLOOKUP function to index the symbols on a separate data ta tab. So you'd have that new that CSV file that you'd update each week with a lot of data on it. You'd copy and paste that into your data tab and then your, your, your good looking report would be constantly updated uh, referencing the ticker symbols uh, to give you uh, an up to date uh, information. Again, these are very advanced ideas. Uh, another idea is to create averages or weighted averages of various portfolio metrics. <clears throat> For instance, what's your weighted average growth rate? Uh, or future uh, future expected growth rate or historical growth rate of your portfolio uh, by company size. So you could calculate that uh, in, a, in your spreadsheet using up-to-date data that comes out of My Stock Prospector. Uh, and as I mentioned, compare companies' pre-tax profit to its industry averages. So I've just got uh, two, a couple more ideas here uh, for you that I wanted to cover. Uh, one is the use of nested conditions. So you might have noticed that we've got uh, across the header at the top uh, underneath the selected fields, we have a um, uh, we have a, the, the condition column, which uh, is right here. Then there's the little parentheses that we have the item, the criteria, then there's a close parentheses, and then there's the record count. Uh, well, the parentheses columns, as you scroll down the pro, the as you scroll down the column here, you can you can barely see, and it's more obvious in the program. There are little fields that you can turn on and off parentheses, so we can group criteria in particular. Uh, 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 groupings, uh, and then use the OR function to allow us to, uh, you know, add, add companies to the results of the screen. So uh, perhaps the best way uh, for me to demonstrate this is to talk through this uh, example that I have here. Uh, first, uh, up here, uh, we turn on the parentheses, and you can see there's a little red parentheses inside our green starburst here. Um, so we have uh, companies that have historic five-year earnings growth of 15% or more, and have a PE to historical growth rate below one, so that's the PEG ratio, below one, and projected five-year earnings growth rate of 15%, or more, and projected total return of 15% or more. And then we close the parentheses over here on the right. All right, so that would give us a list of, in this case, 51 stocks. 
Now we change our condition to or give me companies that have a symbol in this set of companies. Uh, and in this case, there's seven companies on the list, uh, but our record count is 57. That means one of these companies turned up in the above list and would not have been duplicated below. So this uh, function allows you uh, a couple of things. In, as in this example, you can have a screen of the beautiful, perfect screen that you create. This is how we're finding good stocks. And then you can have an or condition that says, or show me companies that I already own in my portfolio. And then you can rank the companies and see where the companies that you currently own, how they line up with all the companies that you just discovered in your screen. Uh, another way that you can use this function, uh, as I do uh, when I'm looking for companies for our small cap informer, is that I uh, look for companies uh, in this case, I've got some return on equity ratings, some pre-tax income ratings. So everything's uh, pretty normal until you get down to here. And capitalization below $3 billion or sales below $2 billion. And then I've got my parentheses off. Right? And then I, keep go then I keep going, and a bunch of other quarterly growth uh, and earnings growth has to be a certain, certain value. So what I'm saying is I want to see all these values above, but I want companies within a particular range of size, either by market cap or by sales. Better Investing talks about looking at sales growth or sales as a determinant of size. Sometimes I like to see companies that might have different, uh, might be a little bit bigger or smaller, but their market cap is what the market considers to be mid-cap-ish companies. Uh, so in this example, uh, I'm not eliminating companies uh, that, ha that might exceed my sales goal if the market cap is still within a reasonable mid-size def definition, right? So this is just another way of letting me uh, find companies that, uh, uh, that, that meet my overall objectives, uh, but giving it a little bit of uh, flexibility in particular situations. So using those nested conditions, and it's very important as you go through these uh, to click on that, that uh, uh, the field totals and running totals up above so that you know that uh, you're not uh, eliminating uh, every single company in the universe. Uh, but uh, when we do this, again, we're able to turn up a, a list of companies that, again, has some very familiar names on it if you're following the better investing approach. Companies like uh, Air Lease and Buffalo Wild Wings uh, showing up on this list, Tennessee Advisors, um, uh, LCI Industries. So uh, a lot of companies, uh, that's the old um, uh, Was Drew Industries, uh, just recently renamed. So a lot of companies, again, coming up on this particular list uh, that uh, kind of give us a, a sense of, uh, of uh, companies that uh, make sense for us as uh, long-term oriented investors. I got two more things to show you before we wrap it up. One is uh, you can export the results of your stock study to toolkit. So you can actually create a toolkit library or portfolio rather uh, with all of the results that uh, you um, uh, that you um, um, uh, that you discovered in your stock search. And the instructions here, there's seven steps to it. Um, they start with exporting that, ex uh, saving that, uh, exporting the results of your Excel CS CSV file uh, that gets saved to your computer. And then from Toolkit, you go to the File menu, you Import Company, then there's an option to import several at once from your subscribed data source. Then you click the Import Ticker List button. Uh, navigate to where the export CSV file is. Uh, you want to look for that file, select it, click open, and click OK, and Toolkit will uh, begin the process. It'll say, where do you want me to put these? In your, just in your stock library? Or do you want me to create a new portfolio? And that's what I do. I create a new portfolio. Uh, so let me show you quickly how that works. Let's go back to our uh, My Stock Prospector. I'll go to My Save Screens here. Uh, and then I will find that mid cap uh, uh, that mid cap growth stock uh, screen that we were working on. So here it is. So I will uh, open that screen up and view the results of it. 
<clears throat> then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to export the results. It's going to save those results down to my uh, computer over here. So program is working. Just waiting for uh, waiting for that export to happen. So uh, so there it's uh, exported. So from toolkit I go to file, import companies, uh, import several at once from subscribed data source. So you got a, a screen that looks like this. That's what we want. We're going to import from a ticker list. So we'll click on import, and we're going to uh, navigate to uh, uh, the um, where we want it to be uh, and so here is that export uh, one CSV file right so I don't even have to modify that file I just select it and there are the companies uh, the the eight or nine companies that pass that screen uh, and I'll say all right uh, go out uh, to my data service and bring in those companies and we're going to create a new portfolio. So we'll call it Mid-Cap Growth 2017-01. So we know what it was. Or, or I'll put in screen as well so I know that this was the, a, a screen that I created. I'll click OK. And now one by one it's going to import uh, all of the data for those eight companies, it says files imported successfully. You can see here is that mid-cap growth screen. Uh, they're all the companies are read in toolkit because there's no judgment. Uh, there's no shares or anything. But from here, I can go ahead and say, all right, what is this monster beverage? I don't know what this company's all about. Let me go ahead and open it up in toolkit. And there we go. And you say, yeah, okay, that. Uh, that looks very interesting. Uh, that seems to meet my, meet my upstreet and parallel criteria. So maybe this is a stock that I will do some more uh, analysis on. So the complete uh, uh, tips are, are linked on every page of My Stock Prospector to show you how that works. And there's a URL there in the handout as well to the FAQ with those complete instructions. And then finally, the roster of quality companies is our, our, our automatic screen each month, uh, each week that we run using um, uh, the uh, data. Uh, at Stock Central. Uh, this is, again, trying to identify stocks that meet the criteria to look good on page one of the SSG and section 2A, the pre-tax profit trend of the SSG. Uh, but we include the quality rating, the take stock quality rating in My Stock Prospector. Uh, it's on a zero to 10 scale. Uh, what we consider for the roster quality is simply companies with a quality rating of 3.4 or higher. So that means that you can create your own take stock quality screen by going to uh, My Stock Prospector, clicking on Define Criteria. Um, let's uh, cr we'll cr cr uh, get rid of all of the criteria there. Uh, we'll go to the safety group when that's done and we will uh, find that uh, quality rating. So uh, go to safety and then click on quality rating when it displays and then uh, 3.4 or better is what we consider uh, to be acceptable quality uh, and that's what qualifies companies to be on the um, uh, on the um, uh, the, comp the roster of quality companies. So we'll click uh, quality rating. Uh, I'll type in the field 3.4. I'll uh, go ahead and just do a running totals. Uh, so you can see there's 24 companies uh, that meet the screen. Again, very quickly we can define a report by adding in 10-year, uh, 5-year earnings and revenue growth. Uh, and then we'll add in uh, We'll go ahead and add in uh, the uh, the company name, industry, and um, sector. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that for now. Just very quickly, 
running through, and then finally we can view the results here. Uh, and so uh, from this point, we can, uh, you can see a lot of these companies have been showing up on some of the other screens that we created. Uh, but again, from this point, you can, you know, click uh, to view the, um, uh, the little SSG graphs uh, and um, scroll through all of the companies that meet the, uh, uh, have met that particular screen. So from this point, the roster, you can include these, these companies uh, in, your other, in your other screens. You can whittle it down a little bit further. Uh, you can build a, other criteria on top of it if you like. Uh, but it's just a real neat way of, uh, again, may, uh, something you probably didn't know, even if you use Stock Central and My Stock Prospector, uh, that you can get your own uh, my st uh, roster of quality uh, using the screening tool there. Now it may vary differ from the, the company list on my stock prospect or um, stock central between the two tools because of uh, calculation differences and some rounding and the date of data uh, depending on where where you are. But uh, that uh, uh, but the the basics of the the companies uh, that pass that minimum quality rating are going to be uh, working out for you. Well, uh, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. I know there's a lot of information, but I'm hoping that uh, it will help a lot of people to get up to speed with using uh, the MySoc Prospector tool. Uh, I think it's a really powerful tool. I'd love to see some more sharing of stock screens uh, and people coming up with ideas for uh, new uh, predefined screens that we can include to, for the benefit of other users. Um, you can talk about that on StockCentral.com or, or email me there at Gerlach at iClub.com. I want to thank you for coming out for our webinar tonight, uh, and I'll look forward to seeing you at many more in 2017. So Happy New Year, everyone, and we'll see you all next time.